Hello, everyone. I am Carrie the Mortician, and today we are talking about creating a When I Die file for yourself. This is so important to have all of your critical information in one place not 10 different places for your family to have to hunt through your whole house, all of your records to try and find the pertinent information that they need when you die. So I'm going to go through a list of things that you need to gather together and put in that when I die file. This file needs to be accessible quickly to your family. Do not put it in a safety deposit box somewhere that they have to have a death certificate to access or certain other paperwork to access that they don't know where it's at. A lockbox at home is great, but somebody needs to make sure they have the key. So you have to let other people in on this information before you die, not after. That is critical. So. The first thing to put in your when I die file is a copy of your legal will. And I say legal will because I often see where somebody has a handwritten document that they're calling their last will and testament of Carrie Northey. And it was something I just scratched on paper, put in the file and stuck away. This doesn't have any legal credence per se. It's more of a suggestion if it is not legally filed. So contact a lawyer, go through the proper steps to legally file a will. In that will, you can appoint an executor of your estate. That is very important to do because even your spouse, your legal spouse, they don't just get access to sell your car with only your name on it or access to your bank account with only your name on it. Just because you are legally married does not give somebody access to things unless they are appointed the executor of your estate. So appointing someone to that role is very, very critical. At every age, even if you're 30, go appoint an executor of your estate because at 30, you probably are the only one on your bank account if you're not married. Go do it. Also, very important for parents of minor children to a point who would raise your children if you are both to die together. This is so critical because your family does not get to just decide this for your children. Your parents don't get to just say, okay, we'll take the kids because we're grandparents. No, 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 no. The judge will decide who gets to raise your children if you do not have it in a will. So go make a will saying who's going to raise your children if they are minor children, if you and your spouse die together. I cannot stress this one enough. Next in the when I die file, copies of your life insurance policy or the life insurance policy itself, or even a piece of paper that says the name of the company, your policy number, and who the beneficiary is. The most amazing invention would be one central database that I could input John Smith, John Smith's social security number, and up would pop all of the life insurance policies that he had. But that does not exist. So you need to have that information down in your when I die file so your family knows where your life insurance policies are and who they're through. Also knowing the beneficiary is super important. Many companies, when we call them, will not tell us who the beneficiary is. So we have to guess. If let's say somebody doesn't have children, which niece or nephew is it? Which friend is it? Which neighbor is it? We have no idea. Um, so we are then guessing who needs to sign all this paperwork when if it was written down, we would know exactly who would be signing. So make sure you write down all of that information, life insurance company name, the policy number, and who the beneficiary is, and keep it up to date. Next, any pension information or retirement information. Do you have a 401k? Do you have a pension through a company? Put that all down as well. Your family can call the human resource department of the company that you work for if you're actively working, and they should be able to help the family with all of that but it's great to have that information down in one place. So maybe it saves a step for your family when it comes time down the road. Did they used to work for the railroad? Did they have a great pension through the railroad that they can later 
go and contact or do they need to send a death certificate to them because you did have a pension you need to let them know that your you know grandpa died and you need to stop that pension payment from coming so put that information in there as well copies of your birth certificate and your marriage license these are not something you have to have in that file but if you're making one central when i die file put copies of that in there as well this will give information like your mother's maiden name and your name before you were married. Maybe your children don't realize you were married previously. And so there's maybe another last name that needs to be listed on the death certificate for legal purposes. These things are all in those documents and you can put them in that file cell phone contract information you got the cell phone but who has the contract to it how do they turn it off how do they stop that bill from coming put that information in there as well also if you have a lock on your phone what is the number to get into your phone if you die by suspicious reasoning and maybe the police or somebody needs to get in your phone to trace your activity or to look at uh, text messages or emails or things like that have that information in there to get into your phone we hear about cases where family members need the deceased to get their finger to unlock their phone have you guys heard about this it's a thing because sometimes families need to get to what is on that phone even if it's a picture for an obituary that maybe you took of yourself and they love that picture, but they need it off the phone to use. So leave somebody that information so they can unlock your phone when you die. Next, bank accounts, checking, savings accounts, lock boxes, um, investments that are through banks. Have a list, have a full list of the bank name, the account number, um, if you have online banking, maybe logins to that so they can access to get to certain things. Keep a running list. Same with passwords. Keep a list of all your logins, your email accounts. I know I have about five different email accounts, whether it's business, whether it's with my significant other, whether it's for my children. I have email accounts for my children where I send them little messages and memories. They're never going to know that exists if I don't have that information written down. Personal emails, work emails, everything has passwords. Make sure you write down those passwords so that when you die, someone can get access to that information if they need it. Next, did you actually plan with a funeral home anything or with the cemetery? Put that information in your when I die file the name of the funeral home, copies of any quotes, any contracts, anything you did purchase through the funeral home, make sure there's copies of that. I can't tell you how many times people come in to make arrangements and they say, dad had everything handled, but all dad had done was call the funeral home, say, how much is a cremation? And that was a whole conversation. And he tells his kids, oh, it's all handled. I called Smith Funeral Home and we're good. But dad really did nothing with the funeral home. There's not even a file for him. So sometimes that miscommunication can lead children to think that things are taken care of for dad. But if all that paperwork, if there was paperwork is in that file, that will give them then the right information about what actually was done. So keep contract copies, keep notes of what funeral home you want to use. Um, some funeral homes will even give you a little card to put in your wallet that says, my funeral arrangements are made by Smith Funeral Home and has a phone number. That way, maybe if you're traveling and you die, they find that card and they call the funeral home and, you know, can, all the dots get connected. So make sure you document who you talk to, where you talk to, what kind of plans you're talking about. Have you ever sat down and wrote down notes about what kind of funeral you want and what songs you want played, where you want to be buried? Do you want to be cremated? Where do you want to be scattered? Put those notes all in that file. That file is going to be always evolving, always changing, always, you know, fluctuating depending on where you are in your life, who you're with, if you're married, if you're not married, if you have children, if you don't have children, if you're moving, if you're traveling. 
if you cancel accounts, if you get new accounts, it's always going to be changing. So just keep it up to date. Once a year, pull that file out, evaluate it, update it, and change it. Next, lists of credit cards. So important. So people know what credit cards they need to cancel following your death so that no one can scam and start using credit cards and accruing debt in your name when you're dead. That's like the worst scamming to do is to prey on somebody who has died, but it's easy to steal that information for them. So don't make it easy for scammers. Get things canceled by leaving your information for your family to handle after you die. Lastly, is an in case of emergency list. Do you have friends from college that you talk to maybe once a year or that you do like Christmas card exchange with or something? Leave a little list of people you would like to be notified that you have died. That way your family knows one, that they exist and two, how to get in contact with them. Because otherwise, when you get that Christmas card the next year to your address, your family's like, oh, they didn't know that she died. Leave a little list for them to give them a helpful point in the right direction of who to notify that you have died. None of us want to be in the situation that we die suddenly in an accident or something, but also in a when you're sick and when you are terminal, it's good to have all of these things in one location for your family. I'll tell you though, the situation that we think we're being helpful and we actually create a roadblock is when we put that information on lockdown that the family can't get to. Let's say they put it in a safety deposit box that you have to have a death certificate for from the executor to access that safety deposit box. But the information to get the executor appointed is in the box. And the information for the death certificate is in the box. And the information to pay for the funeral home who gets the death certificate is in the box. This happens more than you think where we the deceased actually creates a roadblock because they have their information so locked down. So create, like I said, maybe a file at home in your file cabinet or in a fireproof safe at home or in some place that your family knows where it is. Tell one person. Don't just tell your spouse because if they die with you, the information all dies with you. Tell a friend, tell a family member, tell somebody you trust where that information is so that when you die, your family or whoever needs to jump in and do all that business afterwards can go right to that place, pull it out and get that information. Now, the last person I wanna to touch on is veterans. Veterans, please put a copy of your DD-214 in your When I Die file. Again, there's no central, type in the person's name and number and that DD-214 pops up for us to print and use for your burial, to get your flag, to get your honors. There's no place. There is a National Archives we can submit to to get a copy. However, many documents were destroyed in a fire years ago. And especially right now during a pandemic, there is a huge delay in getting copies of those documents. So we cannot get them fast enough to have a burial in three, four days, to get honors in three, four days. So having a copy of that on file is crucial. Put it on file with the funeral home when you make those arrangements ahead of time. That's the best place and the best way to do it. But also put it in your when I die file at home. So these are all super helpful things to gather together to put in that when I die file at your home for your family to be able to take care of you and your business that comes with death most efficiently. Thanks guys. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.